This conference will now be recorded. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Dominic here with you again. And I just want to start by uh, thanking everybody for uh, logging in, for those who are participating today. And I also want to thank those who participated in last week's uh, webinar regarding automotive dig digitization and technology. Um, I, you know, I, I, I felt compelled to make sure that we discuss these topics while we have uh, some opportunity because uh, not only are they important today in today's repairs, understanding how they work and how we can work with them, but um, the level of digitization and technology that are going to be in vehicles by 2024 is uh, something staggering. Um, you know, I'm not too sure how many collision centers in North America, possibly the world, will be able to keep up. But, uh, and I bring that up because that is a cause of concern uh, for me. And we'll dig in a little further on some of the items that we discussed last week. So uh, with no further ado, we'll move ahead. And I thank you all once again for logging in. So digitization and technology, are we ready? Series 2.0. Here is just an overview of what we're going to discuss. We're going to recap the five areas that we looked at uh, last week that, in my opinion, will change the automotive industry forever. We'll take a look at some of the takeaways that I hope you received from our webinar last week. Uh, we're going to look at OEM certifications, as I feel that's the only conduit to prepare yourself for a safe, profitable, um, and, uh, you know, a safe for the client, profitable for the shop, and a safe repair for the technicians as well. Uh, throughout that, we'll discuss a little bit about the electric vehicle. As we referred to it uh, last week, this decade of 20, uh, the 20s, the roaring 20s, will be the decade of the EV. And uh, you'll see why a little more if you didn't, if you didn't see it last week. Uh, we're going to discuss ADAS, and you know, as some of our as some of our courses, we've done um, you know OEM information and writing estimates. Uh, we've touched upon ADAS, what it looks like. Today, we're going to, and those were videos and discussions that we were basing from 216 to 218. Today, we're going to take a look at a video illustrating ADAS in 2020. Okay, it's a lot different than what we were talking about on 216, 218 Honda Pilots. We're gonna be discussing the uh, autonomous vehicle. And uh, as we outlined last week, the autonomous vehicle cannot be if it is not for ADAS, okay? ADAS, the Advanced Driver Assistance System, is what's allowing autonomous vehicles to even be a discussion, okay? So we're gonna take a look at as well, when we're looking at the AV, the autonomous vehicle, we're going to look at where we are with ADAS right now and where we've come from with ADAS and what we can expect in the future. AI, artificial intelligence and ML machine learning for collision repair. Okay. Um, our partners at Mitchell in particular, Mitchell Software, are finding different ways to help us integrate AI and machine learning into our repair processes. Um, IOT is the Internet of Things. Um, we discussed last week how the Internet of Things is allowing us to, uh, in, the, in the next year, order a Starbucks coffee via Bluetooth through your computer, through your vehicle's computer, dispatch that Starbucks order to the local Starbucks in your area, and charge it to a credit card without even talking to a person, okay? Your vehicle will integrate PayPal, Google Pay, um, and all types of what we call discretionary items, discretionary purchases, which, which we'll discuss a little bit further in IoT and 5G. These are all gonna be integrated. Your vehicle will be as useful to Amazon as your laptop, okay? 5G and collision repair, and then we're going to talk about ACES. 
And if Joe DePaolo is on the call, it's not the four of a kind that he had at his poker game last week. Uh, Ace is, 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 an, is an acronym for um, uh, the vehicle movement. And we're going to discuss that a little bit as well as we move forward. So a recap uh, from the technology and digitization 1.0 from last week. EVs uh, are obviously electric vehicles. And uh, there's some, their electric vehicle is something that's not 100% electrified. Uh, your hybrid is a form of electric vehicle. It is a vehicle that runs partially on combustion and electric. Um, your Teslas of the world are 100% EV, okay? Uh, artificial intelligence. These are way, uh, artificial intelligence is literally the emergence of the computer and its ability to remove um, monotonous function from day-to-day -day activity, okay? Uh, for example, here's a quick example. There are uh, inventory systems that we're looking at, which, and this is a real live experience of AI, never mind AI in your vehicle yet, but there is forms of collision services and TIMS uh, ordering system that will, able, will be able to take your pattern over a 90-day period and automatically order inventory on your behalf based on your 90-day uh, consumption, okay? Plus or minus 10%. It's being used right now across the states, and I'm being told is very, very accurate. That's one way that artificial intelligence can impact the collision centers today. Machine learning. It's the ability for the artificial intelligence to continue to learn. We're gonna dive into AI and ML um, when it comes to the estimating process a little further throughout this uh, webinar. Internet of Things. My own personal um, description of Internet of Things is allowing um, people to consume or access more with more ease, with greater ease, okay? And now, mind you, a lot of it is transferring of data. So that's how your order from your vehicle to Starbucks gets completed, is a whole millions of points of data a second are being shared either via 5G or satellite pickup and drop off. But we'll dive into that a little more um, throughout the presentation. And uh, 5G. 5G, what it is, is, is literally fifth generation cellular wireless. So let's go back to 1G. 1G was when my father had a cell phone the size of my laptop and got charged $7 a minute that he was on it, okay? Um, 2G was the emergence of phones that are a little bit smaller, maybe the size of a rotary phone, but built into your vehicles. There were phones that were built into your vehicles that could have been powered through uh, Rogers or Bell, but which was also closer to $6 a minute of airtime. 3G was the introduction of the smartphone. Early, early BlackBerry would have been an, uh, a, good, a good way of describing the 3G. 4G? is quite frankly any other cell phone under the sun in the last decade. And 5G, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, Qualcomm, Verizon, Huawei. Uh, these are phones that are uh, definitely 5G driven or 5G compatible right off the hop, okay? So it's a fifth generation in cellular wireless communication. And uh, the autonomous vehicle, is essentially what it is, the vehicle taking the monotonous of day-to-day uh, -day driving, taking that away from the human and allowing there to be more time freed up for other things that can be done while you're in travel. And we'll dip into that a little further. And then of course there's ACEs. And ACEs are the autonomous, connected 
electric, and shared vehicles. I would say about 80% of the manufacturers right now, and not even right now, this has been in play for at least five years. ACES is where all of the manufacturers have, have had their heads at in regards to vehicle creation uh, for at least five years. Some that are outside thinking outside of the box could have been even discussing this a decade ago. Okay. So some of the recap that we want to have from last week, listen, the EV vehicle is available, okay? But this decade will be the decade of the electric vehicle. By 2024, 40% of the vehicles sold will be in one way, shape, or form uh, electrified. More so, I would say closer to 80% being a fully uh, electric vehicle. Um, and, you know, uh, the World Automakers Association, uh, you know, which is basically a conglomerate, it's a, a cooperative for every manufacturer in the world except for the big three, hence the World's Automakers Association, suggests that artificial intelligence and machine learning will help them decrease accidents by 80% by 2040. So, okay, let's not look at our shops right now in a COVID uh, environment, but let's go back to February 14th, not just because it's Valentine's Day, because that was a day where everybody was very busy. If you would take, fast forward 20 years from now, you take eight of the vehicles, eight out of 10 in your shop, vehicles in your shop, and put them back on the road. Because some of the stuff that we're going to talk about, IoT, 5G, and what it means to vehicles, will definitely cause less accidents. IoT, the Internet of Things, will allow for complete connectivity. Whether you are using an Alexa, Google Home, Android, Apple, BlackBerry, Amazon, this is where the discretionary items of the world that we buy, you will be able to bring what you want, when you want, how you want, through your vehicle. Okay? Uh, and we'll get into it a little bit later, but essentially your vehicle will integrate all of your personal li and lifestyle connectivity through your car. 5G will definitely be um, a big mover in technology and will enhance communication like something we've never seen before. We will start seeing in, throughout this decade, V to N, vehicle to network communication which could be in through the form of um, um, connectivity to the OE, connectivity to the insurance carrier. For example, DGIG has Justo, which is their telematics. And telematics will be a direct connect connection instantly to either the OE or to the insurer. Vehicle to infrastructure. If there is a light that's out, and uh, police or EMS have not been made aware of it, that your vehicle will be able to connect to the 311 or to their station and allow and, and inform them of the um, problem with the infrastructure. Maybe there's a, uh, a collision that nobody's reported yet. These are the types of things that your vehicle will have the power to do. V to V, vehicle to vehicle technology, and also, vehicle to pedestrian technology your vehicle in this decade we will see a vehicle that does not need to have your cell phone number to text you not to jaywalk as i'm coming 300 300 meters away uh vehicle to vehicle to uh conversations all right millions of decisions being made per second and discussing communication through computer to computer on who's to slow down or speed up to avoid an accident, okay? Uh, and, you know, the, uh, the autonomous vehicle, the race for the first autonomous vehicle is very much on. There are 14 OEs that are pushing to have the first regulated um, autonomous vehicle. Uber, Lyft, Microsoft, Something I never thought I've ever seen, I would have ever seen before. I never saw this coming, but Amazon and BlackBerry working together to be able to launch um, software that will allow for the first autonomous vehicle to have 100% zero hacking rate. 
Google has their own fleet of autonomous vehicles through their subsidiary Waymo. And there's many others that are looking to get involved in launching the first regulated uh, autonomous vehicle. And here's a quick example, Dyson Vacuums. Sir James Dyson invested over $1 billion in the research and development of making sure that his vacuum propeller system could power a vehicle. He came through to his R&D up to about 75% completion and decided to turn the project off. I don't know if this was just a way for him to spend money or spend time, but he was not too far off from completing his first autonomous vehicle and uh, an electric slash autonomous vehicle and decide to pull out of the race. All right, so OEM certifications. Um, why we need them, I don't think I have to explain that to you, but here's just some of the reasons why you need to, all right? Understanding what levels of aluminum we can or cannot repair. Understanding the levels of high ultra high strength steel that need to be replaced and whether something needs to be bonded, welded, or um, um, screwed into a vehicle, okay? Here you have a few pictures, you know, like uh, my wife always told me how she loves the i3, and I think it's a real cute car as well, but when you take all that plastic colorful sheet metal off, all you find inside is carbon fiber and aluminum. And I can tell you right now with great confidence that none of our stores are ready to work on this vehicle right now and bring it back to OEM spec, okay? Here are examples of the Audi uh, 2018 Las Vegas vehicle show. Audi had this vehicle running out of track, 60 kilometers an hour, completely autonomous. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's many a company, but particularly Audi, all they're waiting for is regulation and they'll be ready to launch the first autonomous vehicle. So OEM certifications, and last week we discussed, and it was brought up in the chat, what one might need to be um, uh, OE certified ready. And I will bring that up for you right now. So what we'll do is first go to um, certified collision repair requirements. Bear with me one second here. Here we are. This is, and you can Google it just as easy as I did, but here is a list of everything that you would need to be OE certified in any of the programs. So this is a lot of the, they look at general business requirements, okay? Uh, what does that mean? You have to be in, in, uh, in business for at least five years and have a credit rating and service history. Um, you need to have over $1 million uh, liability on your policy, okay? Uh, a limited lifetime warranty. I'm sure that all, you know, um, subscribe to an electronic procedure page estimating system. We have a lot, of, I can say that all of our stores can check off on this right now. Here, technical repair is where things start getting a little iffy. Are we all ICAR certified? Uh, and have we achieved that in the last 12 months? Um, do we all have a provincially licensed technician? Okay. Are we all utilizing OEM approved refinishing systems? Um, for those who do not use PPG, um, you know, uh, unless you're using one of the big four, PPG, BASF, uh, Exalta, and Axel. Uh, I don't even think that Sharon Williams, Valspar, um, R or e, um, e Magic, I've seen one store we're finishing with. None of these are, are applicable for an OEM uh, program, okay? And then we get into a lot of the, the investments. You're going to need MIG and MAG breeze uh, welding. Uh, you're going to need uh, a three-phase inverted spot welder. You're going to need digital 
um, uh, measuring systems. You can be inwards of sixty to a hundred thousand dollars to purchase all these things. You will need a downdraft or cross draft spray booth. Okay, um, these are some of the things that they're going to be looking for. Once we're done this webinar, I will email this page to everybody who's participated. And for those who are interested in starting to do some of the homework, like uh, I would like to, I'm just waiting for ICAR to to uh, help us register everyone on their website. And then uh, our operations team will be helping you walk through all of your ICAR credits that you're required to have. Getting back to the presentation. And once you've completed all of those uh, items on that checklist, you will be applicable to be certified by uh, CCC, CCIAP, General Motors, Honda, and uh, you get these two Toyota and the FCA um, approvals with CCC. All right. So OEM position statements, OEM information, um, what's all this stuff cost? Well, let's uh, let's see. I I believe I have that right here. If you want to get all of the OEM information, if you want to get um, all the position statements, this is how much it would cost you per month and annually to get them for every one of these manufacturers. Okay. So if you wanted to to, to subscribe monthly to everybody, it would you would be into sixty three hundred a month or almost 55,000 a year. Now the uh, rates at all data are 219 uh, a month, and those are in US funds. But at, uh, you know, because we have the entire network on board, we have been able to get them to bring it down to 199.99 per month in Canadian funds, all right? Now for those who are concerned about having to pay the additional 199 to be quite honest with you you need it i um dgig economical quite frankly any other insurance company they haven't made it mandatory to the sh to the store but it's expected from the franchise to help their their constituents write vehicles that are the oem procedure spec okay so Outside of that, by using uh, all data yourself and having Paolo work through it with you on Central Review, um, you would need to recover $50 a week from using all data in order to find an ROI. Okay? I'm, I can guarantee you that I can find you $200 per estimate. Okay? So that's the value in having all data and, and being part of a network we we're able to get the cost decrease further. Once we get over 100 stores, I already have it in our contract to reduce the cost even further for us, okay? But uh, that will all come in due time. Uh, getting back to our presentation. So the decade of the EV, all right? Uh, this is something that uh, I'm going to be planning for uh, Simplicity Car Care in uh, the next, the in next year's business planning for sure. I not only do I want us to be able to repair vehicles that are electric, but I'm very much concerned about um, how we're able to affect the long-term service, the serviceability of an electric vehicle. Um, you know. How can we monetize this electric vehicle movement? Let me give you some stats um, from McKinsey Research. 50% of buyers of a vehicle right now are considering an electric vehicle, even if there are not too many models available, okay? So number one, we need to know that it's quite the potential for 50% of our clients to renew their lease or get a new vehicle, it being electric, fully electrified. Uh, more people would buy an electric vehicle if there were better compensation and discounts. So the federal government 
is very much invested in making sure that the EV movement moves as fast as possible. So you can find that within 2020 into 21, you'll find that there will be better credits to help launch the EV movement within the next five years. Um, you know, and internal combustion engine vehicles, also known as ICE, ICE vehicles, internal combustion engines, um, they're finding themselves, um, you know, up against the ropes. For the first time ever, the electric vehicle has outsold in the United States the um, manual transmission vehicle. So just think about it this way. In 2019, there were more electric vehicles sold than electric transmission vehicles in the United States. That tells me that the movement is moving and it's moving fast. Okay. Um, you know, fleet companies and government agencies, they're all moving to this very, very quickly. So for those who are enjoying work from CEI, um, Enterprise, Car Rentals, possibly Avis, you'll find that within the next year, there will be a, a bigger intake in electric vehicles um, coming through those fleet organizations. All right. And ADA. So, you know, in 2016, in between 214 and 216, it depends on which manufacturer it was. All of these types of ADAS were being added to vehicles. Um, intelligent parking, cross traffic alert, uh, lane keep assist. You can find this in most Hondas and Toyotas today. Um, you know, adaptive cruise control, blind spot detector, that's even stock on a Nissan Leaf. Okay. And here are some of the companies that are leading uh, the creation of microchips semiconductors, um, and other modules that allow for the ADAS. Now, I'm going to bring up a, vi uh, a video that we're going to watch, and it is going to give you a better idea of where ADAS is in 2020 and where you can expect it to be in the future. Welcome to the CES Platinum Lot, where Forcia is showcasing its latest technologies by Forcia Clarion Electronics. Here, we're exploring the ADAS, the Advanced Driver Assistance System. Now, these systems lay the groundwork for tomorrow's autonomous vehicle and its adoption. Let's check it out. The fusion of Forcia Clarion cameras sensors, and computer vision are the fundamental techno bricks of these autonomous park and drive demonstrations. They show how intelligent systems can make the experience safer and more convenient. We're joined right now by Sebastian Mears. Hi, Sebastian. Thanks for having us here. Appreciate it. Let's talk about the ballet park. It's such an incredible technology. What can you tell me about it? Yeah, so basically you're seeing it with a camera, uh, but it's sensors and LiDAR. So I think 
so much for having us on the back today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there we are. That is where autonomous um, vehicles are at due to today's ADAS. And this, I, I think that video, what, what the significance of that video is how it drives everything together. IoT, Internet of Things, uh, 5G communication through a cell phone to vehicle. Obviously, the autonomous driving and the benefit of machine learning and obviously the level of uh, radar lidar and sensors and cameras that are allowing the vehicle to perfectly park and pick up as if uh, a human did so um the emergence of the autonomous vehicle you know what we mentioned last week that uh when you find government and regulatory agencies getting involved, something's moving fast, considering the government's never moved fast on much at all. Uh, just last month, the city of Toronto announced an $8 million investment into the infrastructure of autonomous vehicles in Toronto. As we have bike lanes, we'll also have autonomous vehicle lanes. Okay, um, they won't be all over the place. They'll be in, in certain areas, probably routes that are high, heavily driven and uh, easy to maneuver, but that's still something that is coming. In the realm of autonomous vehicle, you have 14 automakers that are focusing. So these 14 automakers here throughout North America and Europe and uh, in Asia as well, are focusing on creating all 54 of these brands that are dabbling with the autonomous um, movement. So here's the, basically what you can call a life cycle of the autonomous vehicle. So zero, level zero autonomy, that was nothing. Maybe anti-lock brakes, heavily, heavily dependent on uh, human interaction. Level one was the introduction to cruise control. Get the vehicle up to 100, click cruise, and take your foot off a pedal or brake, okay? Uh, level two was the addition of all of the ADAS that we discussed in the uh, prior slide. Blind spot detectors, um, um, lane keep assist, um, cameras, LIDAR and radar, etc. Now, eyes off the road. This is, we are now in between the level two and three. We're, we're almost at level 2.5, 2.7, and I'll tell you why. Uh, particularly Subaru and General Motors, they've added technology to, on their brand new 2020s and 2021 lines, where the vehicles can actually scan the inside of the car to detect whether you are fully aware. Um, they look at eye movement patterns. They look at posture, how you're sitting in the vehicle. And they're able to, with that being said, they can warn you or ask you to either sit up or the seat will jolt a couple of times to get you to move back into a into a better controllable position. So that's where we are right now, in between levels two and three. So we've broken the barrier of two, and we have a few manufacturers entering the three level. Um, fully automated and autonomous, we'll see this in the roaring 20s. Uh, two out of 10 vehicles in 2030, will be rolling in the level five machine um, machine handling of the vehicle. Now, uh, before I go further, I'll just mention that if there's any questions, comments, or concerns at all, uh, make sure you drop them in the chat and we will definitely um, look to clarify questions, comments, any concerns that you may have um, uh, before the end of this webinar.
All right. And uh, now we get to artificial intelligence in automobiles and estimating. Okay. So um, here in the top left is a quick graph. The uh, Mitchell estimating has actually gone to USAA insurance, which is the American version of CAA. And they are actually piloting um, the artificial intelligence for estimating uh, in their US uh, marketplace. So um, bear with me one second. Um, you know, just to let you know what the plans are for this. This is not for, to be able to remove the appraisers um, from, the, the, from the production of the shop or to remove staff from the insurance companies, quite frankly. But the less dependence we have, so humans do a great job at doing what we do. This network gives us a great example of that considering all of our stores with DJG were ranked top top performers in 2019 and that DJG state simplicity car care is the highest performing network in their network okay so it's 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 the human ability to run a process and the interaction of computer and automation the only thing better in my eyes the only in my opinion the only thing better than humans handling a process and cloud or artificial intelligence um, doing its job is when you merge the two of them together, okay? So what I'd love to see is, like here you have a Mitchell MD in the bottom left screen, we have a Mitchell MD 350 that is taking pictures of a vehicle. It is now going to upload those photos to its Mitchell cloud, and the artificial intelligence will have uh, an estimate, which is very, very accurate, completed in less than three minutes. So let me give you a few examples of where the artificial intelligence has used machine learning to improve itself in the estimating process. When Mitchell started about five years ago, going down this path, um, it was actually in 2010. My apologies. It was, it was over 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago. They handed um, 1 million estimates to their um, IT partners that created this um, artificial intelligence for them. 1 million estimates with... 20,000 photos, okay? And the estimates came back at 65% accuracy, okay? When they gave them 2 million estimates with 20 million photos, the, uh, the estimates came back with 75% accuracy from what was written from the shops, okay? So that's where the machine learning is coming in. And I can reassure you, by the time Mitchell Cloud or Mitchell Intelligence is available in Canada, uh, I can foresee a program like this allowing us to get online photos, integrating this into any, any service that we have that states.com or at. I would love to see my vision for this is not to have appraisers replaced, but to have clients interact with us through a Twitter account where they're sending us photos of their, their uh, vehicle and us replying to them with up to 95% accuracy uh, on, on uh, having an estimate with 95% accuracy and allowing them to make an educated decision on how they want to move forward with their, um, with their repairs. I see using the artificial intelligence with our current process that is, um, you know, in 2019 with our partners, our process, our process garnered less than 4% supplement rate. So for every million dollars of collision repair, there was a $40,000 supplement where our 
two provinces that we operate in were all in double digit uh, supplement rates. So using artificial intelligence, we'll only be able to increase our own personal capacity and allow for our frontline staff to be focused on greater value add services to our clients. Internet of things. Um, we discussed in great detail last week how the internet of things is going to allow us to have discretionary items that we buy and what's a discretionary item purchasing something from amazon possibly doing a monthly or bi-monthly visit to costco possibly ordering online anywhere regardless if it's amazon or not and getting your favorite venti blonde um with a double double waiting for you at your local starbucks those are the types of interactions that your vehicle manufacturers are planning for you. Here you have IoT. These are augmented glasses, all right? AR stating for, meaning augmented reality. Okay? And what these glasses are doing is as this technician is pouring oil or has a desire to pour oil into the vehicle, it's telling him exactly how much he should be pouring in from his visual before he's too low or too high. Now, this is a, a service, uh, um, um, an engine service example, where you can also use augmented reality based on Internet of Things is possibly opening up that same hood, taking a photo by simply looking at the VIN and pushing a button on the side of the goggles, and reviewing, bringing up the frame measurements. What this uh, augmented reality glasses will be able to do is to take the prescribed vehicle uh, front end dimensions based on what, um, this, this must be a Chevy or a Toyota Echo, I believe it is, based on what Toyota states the front end structure measurements should be, these glasses will be able to measure and give you a quick scan and inform you whether you are out or not on your um, on your frame, okay? This is where the repair planning, this is where uh, it, it can, our, our process can be launched. So this is a great example of when I say, what are the best things that the humans do? What is the best thing that artificial intelligence does? And how can we merge them together, okay? to become better tomorrow with technology than we were today without it. Here's a few different ways that diagnostics and, and prognostics can be done um, by using, you know, um, iPads, uh, laptops, phones, and um, um, 5G networking. And 5G in its place in automotive. Well, here's a quick uh, view, a snapshot of all the different Vs that we're about to experience, vehicle to network, vehicle to pedestrian, communication. Like picture that, picture you're jaywalking, okay? And a 2022 Toyota Camry that's 300 meters away instantly texts you and says, I'm 300 kilometers away, please remove yourself from my lane. Like, you know, that, that's the type of stuff that they're talking about. Doing. And your vehicle doesn't have your text, or your phone number, or email, or anything, okay? Vehicle to infrastructure, allowing our government to know that there are potholes, informing them of a collision that may need EMS, just by scanning the level of damage to the vehicle, notifying EMS on our behalf, okay? Vehicle to network. Um, you know, pulling from the 5G and, and the satellites and pulling information to better update your ways, your Google Maps, or whatever um, you may be looking at uh, while you're driving. Here's a little bit more about the different levels of infrastructure. Here's the, you know, the movement from 4G to 5G and what it's allowing us to do. Um, you know, it's uh, very powerful, very technical stuff. 
And for those that, you know, that think that 5G is really just going to elevate your, your usage of your cell phone, 5G is going to be a $2.4 plus trillion dollar economic output by 2035. So 5G will be helping everything that we do connect, okay? Um, it's going to change even the way you're receiving mail. And I mean mail post. So aces, here's four of a kind. Those are a couple of aces I'd like to see every now and then. But um, you know, last time I was playing poker, I couldn't even bottles if I wanted. So what do aces look like? All right, as we discussed earlier, the autonomous vehicle, uh, the connected vehicle, the electric vehicle, and the shared vehicle. So we all know what the autonomous vehicle is. Um, the connected vehicle is the art of merging 5G, IoT, uh, AI, and bringing discretionary uh, customer demands to you in your vehicle, or you being able to demand them from the comfort of your vehicle. The electric vehicles, we all know what those are. We all know the leader of the pack is Tesla. Uh, it'll be very, very hard for any manufacturer to move Tesla from the leader. I can foresee in the next five years, um, many a merger or acquisition in the OEM space. Um, the big three are already far too behind to even catch up to Tesla. Um, you know. When it comes to um, electric vehicles, I could see stuff like possibly General Motors or Ford becoming one company. Um, I could see uh, Honda maybe merging, Honda or Toyota merging with BYD, who is a Chinese manufacturer of electric vehicles. Um, and there could be a lot more, there's a lot more movement right now uh, Nissan um, already owns Renault, which is a, a French um, vehicle manufacturer, and Peugeot and Citroën. They are in deep talks with those two companies as well. So, and these companies that I've just mentioned, you're not going to see them in North America, but they're leaders of automotive uh, manufacturing in Europe. Okay. So, in five years from now, the landscape of the manufacturer might be something completely different than what we see today. Um, FCA, Chrysler, is also kicking the tires of Peugeot, either for a merger or an, or an acquisition. So there's going to be a lot of moving and shaking based on the uh, electric vehicle and based on some of these legacy manufacturers and their inability to prepare uh, for the future. So, you know what? Uh, I got Macaulay Culkin here. I got uh, my neighbor's monkey and my son called Batman, who uh, he always goes to for his answers. And none of them got any answers for us on what to do now. Okay. Uh, some of the things that we should be doing now with all of these things that we've discussed regarding digitization and technology. We should be ensuring that we are gathering OEM information on every single estimate, okay? Number one, all data. All data has come a very, very long way. Their legacy program, the Gen 1, Generation 1 program, was um, very hard to use, not user-friendly, um, but it has come, the Gen 2 version, has come a very long way. I will, I will go out there and say, I, and I've used OEM One Stop going directly to the manufacturer's site and paying per use. I've gone through Tech Advisor. I've gone through All Data. Um, I've even gone through just uh, using Google channels and YouTube. All Data is the Google for automotive repair. You don't, need, you don't even need to be technically savvy. You can put in your VIN number, 
and Google an operation or a concern that you may have, and you will be able to find an answer. Now, um, Paolo, who leads our central review and technical support team, he will be launching a webinar uh, in the next few weeks on the usage of all data and how you can use it to not only ensure that you're writing a safe estimate, a safe repair order for your clients, a profitable estimate and repair order for your shops, and one of the most important things is a safe estimate for your technicians to work on, okay? We can't have people working on electric vehicles that have not grounded all three batteries, high volt batteries in a vehicle. A quick example, the 2020 Prius has three high volt batteries, one underneath the vehicle's floor, one behind the, the passenger seat, and one in the trunk. If you do not disengage all three, we, you will have a life or death situation in your collision center when someone is pulling and or welding that vehicle, okay? So all data is a go-to and is mandatory. Quite frankly, we're also gonna be changing the way we audit files and we'll be looking for your all data information to be saved in each and every one of your summit files. Not only is it, is it important for you to have safety and profitability, but the insurance companies want peace of mind that we're managing risk on their behalf. And quite frankly, I can't blame them. You can also use your procedure pages. Here's a clip right here. Procedure pages 26. We also have all the procedure pages saved in your learning tree. We'll also discuss the usage of these procedures when we when Paulo has his um, uh, all data uh, usage webinar and scan tools. Listen, it's one thing to scan a vehicle. It's one thing to pre and post scan a vehicle. It's one thing to be able to conduct a dynamic calibration. Okay. What we also mentioned last week is when it comes to calibrations, there's two types of calibration. There's a static calibration. That is a calibration that requires an OEM tool and target. That is not a calibration that you'll be able to conduct at your shop. That is one that we should be scheduling into a dealer. However, there's dynamic calibration, which are upwards of 70% of the calibrations that you'll be doing in your shop currently. Those can be done via scan tool, and those are operations that can be charged for above and beyond your pre and post scan, okay? We'll discuss that further uh, while we conduct our uh, all data webinar as well. So, you know, and here's a couple of reasons, drive home reasons why you want to use your OEM information why you need to have OEM approved scan tools. You need OEM compliance at the point of repair to ensure that the vehicle is safe once you're done. I also want us looking out for the safety of our technicians, all right? I just gave you uh, an example of where we can have a very, very uh, bad situation in a store if all three high volt batteries are not safely disconnected. You need to be able to know the difference between what is static, what is a dynamic calibration, and which service can I conduct in my store, and how much do I charge for it. Compliance to UPCRs, Uniform Procedures for Collision Repair. And once again, safe repairs. Paramount forever, but more so today. Uh, I'm going to get to the chat line and see if there's anything that anyone has questions or concerns about. I have, I believe this is a comment. Uh, you guys have mentioned that uh, ICAR would offer free courses for the month of April due to COVID. Uh, my wife called ICAR and they didn't know anything about this. Is there a process or channels we need uh, to do in order to get these ICAR classes for the month. 
Well, this is, and this is this question was from Kevin Cox in Watford. And I appreciate, Kevin, that you and Chantel are uh, very proactive and not reactive and looking to get your iCar courses, whether they be free or not. Um, the fact that they've been advertised for free, yes. As a matter of fact, um, because of that, um, because of that uh, call that Chantel made and the fact that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, I'm actually going to look up in my emails for the, the uh, notice that was given by Andrew Shepard in the Collision Repair Bank, and I'm actually going to forward you that email stating that they would be offering free courses for the month of uh, April and possibly further uh, to help out through um, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we're going through. So I'll make sure that I forward that not just to Kevin, but to everybody else. Uh, mind you, I'll have to dig deep into my collision repair mag uh, email updates, but I will find that between today and tomorrow, and I will, or today and Monday, and I will have it sent out to everyone so you can put iCar's feet to the fire. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments? No problem, Kevin. You're very much welcome. And I appreciate all your commitment to joining these webinars. We do appreciate it. Well, if there are no other questions, comments, or concerns, what is a good scanner? Coming from Calgary South. Um, that's a great question. So we mentioned uh, uh, last week a couple of uh, scanners. Now, the best scanner is going to be Aztec. The problem with Aztec is that they want $169 US for the first scan and $69 US for the second scan. Not, that's not gonna fly, and you won't be reimbursed by any, any insurance company. Um, however, a great tool to get you guys going is the MD350. That is the um, um, tool used by, or produced by Mitchell. And if you'd like, um, for Michael Tao and the team at Calgary South, uh, we can we can dig into that next week, and I can also um, make sure that Mitchell sends us the uh, paperwork to be able to get you guys one delivered to your store. Okay, and it's great. It does. We have one at our East York corporate store, uh, the MD three fifty, and we are we are dynamically calibrating seventy percent of the vehicles. Um, some of the instances where you know you won't be able to is um, any Honda from 216 up, from the Honda Fit all the way up to the Honda Odyssey. If you are replacing the uh, door or the right side mirror, we cannot dynamically calibrate that. That is a static, a static calibration that needs to visit the dealer. But I will get that for the team at Calgary South. I'll get some of that paperwork put together for you guys for next week, and we'll get Mitchell to ship you guys off uh, an MD uh, 350. Um, are there any other questions um, throughout this? Here, I think we got one more popping up. A little bit off topic here, no problem. No topics off topic when we're on a webinar with the network. There's a lot of concern in the world that 5G is not healthy and that causes major health issues. What are your thoughts on that? Well, to be honest with you, I uh, this may have come from uh, Ronnie at Ottawa Airport. I appreciate the mention, it is a health concern. Um, I'm concerned about anything that's gonna be pumping out radiation into the sky uh, at high amounts. Um, that's from what I understand, the frequencies. That's what will allow for uh, frequency measures to be um, moving at such a fast pace that we would need for 5G. But to combat that, there's a genius that you, you might know him. He goes by the name of Elon Musk. And um, he has started a company called Starlink. You can look this up on YouTube or Google. And for years now, he's been sending 5G satellites into space 
His goal is to cover the globe with enough 5G satellites to make sure that the connection of the 5G is done in outer space, not in Earth, and possibly giving free 5G connectivity to every digital program in the world. All right. Um, the man's my idol and is the real Tony Stark. And I hope that he's very successful with his Starlink venture because I'd love for radiation not to be running rampant throughout the globe. And I'd like to leave that stuff for outer space. So that's one way we can combat that. Uh, Kevin Cox has another question that's off topic. Um, have you heard about using an ozone machine in a car for 10 to 15 minutes to kill any viruses? I've seen a lot of advertisements. Um, you know, there's a lot of Facebook feeds that are advertising this stuff now. Ozone um, um, machines are really, really good. Okay. Um, they will definitely clean surfaces, surfaces uh, particularly vehicles, with a great degree of removal of germ. Uh, you know, when you're talking about COVID-19, I, if it's killing one germ, I'm sure it would kill any COVID germ that was on a, uh, a vehicle. But um, you can only improve the level of cleanliness when using an ozone machine. Um, you know, and they, they come in different manufacturers and different forms. But uh, yeah, I would, I would expect that uh, it would only improve your detailing process and capabilities should you have used one. I hope that answered uh, your question. Does anybody have anything else? Um, any concern about moving forward with, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and vehicles and cars? Any of the big five topics that we mentioned here today? And if we went right back. You know, okay. Well, um, you know what? It's been an absolute uh, honor to be able to put this sort of content together for you. And, um, you know, uh, stay tuned next Tuesday for those that are in, uh, in uh, Ontario. We're going to be doing another review of the DGIG uh, rental process. Uh, we're getting at the operations team. We're getting a lot of questions about that. So we want to make sure that uh, we're able to help you all with that um, as much as possible. So we'll be launching another webinar on that on Tuesday. And within the next couple of weeks, you can expect uh, more webinars from the uh, operations team. But if there's any content that you would personally like to have something uh, created for, uh, anything at all that has to do with collision or maybe not, you know, you want to, you want some help on your personal finances. I don't know if I'm the person to speak to about it, but if we can find you the help for it, we'll definitely do that. All right. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have yourself uh, a very happy Easter weekend and ensure that you stay safe and we will get back at this again on Monday morning. Thank you all again and have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.